personal dolls to me, purchases that I have made that live here forever, Jonathan Green. This picture was taken at his school for his school. Just extraordinary condition of the head. Hall and Diane comes home from school looking like this a lot, where toes and a chubby toes on, on any doll. I love her little knitted costume. Hello, welcome back to another doll video. If you're new here, my name is Rachel and we are tuning in live from Turn of the Century Antiques, which is the home of the Virtual Doll Convention. This is a sharing video. I love when we just have a tiny treasure here at the doll shop to unbox, well, he's already unboxed, but to share with you. So welcome, 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 welcome. This is a safe space. Our channel on every video, of course, is a safe space to enjoy dolls and doll collecting and talk about dolls and, and make dolls your world because dolls are our world here at our shop and at the virtual doll convention. So if you're new to me, I am a doll lover and collector of all types of dolls. We do all kinds of things here at the doll shop to make our world go round. But on this channel, I do share a lot of personal dolls to me, purchases that I have made that live here forever. And two of them we have not talked about in depth really. Well, one of them we showed in a earlier video, but we have another little tiny treasure here at the doll shop, which is a sweet little Katie Crusa Do Mine doll, which is doll seven and Do Mine is little doll. So we have a really sweet treasure. So this video, of course, because it is about Katie Crusa dolls is dedicated to my good friend and many of our good friends, Jonathan Green. This picture was taken at his school for his school not too long before he passed actually and it was his favorite picture of him. He wore this shirt many times. It was one of his favorite shirts and he always looked great in it and I actually have a shirt that's this print that I should wear and think of him, but there's no way I could do a KT Cruza video and share something without sh showing and talking about Jonathan. I would have bought this doll, I'm sure, no matter what, but when it's a KT Cruza doll now forever, it's just imprinted on my heart about Jonathan. So if you were a good friend of Jonathan and you miss him very much, I'm right there with you. Jonathan was a historian. He was a collector. He, he collected collections. That was one thing that he used to like to say, which I loved that. But he was an aficionado on so many things. There wasn't one type of doll that I could ever ask about and show him that he just didn't know almost everything you could possibly know. He was an incredible person. He knew so much and I have just missed him terribly since the time that he passed. And I think about him almost every day. Almost every day I think about him and I think about a lot of the people that we love and appreciate that are no longer here that we just will never forget. And he's one of them. Over across the room actually, we have an entire showcase that's dedicated to Raggedy Ann and Katie Cruiser dolls and Jonathan Green and it brings me a lot of comfort. But anyway, this video is a happy video because we are talking about Katie Crusa and we're going to talk about our little do mine here that is very sweet. Also, my dear friend Bradley Justice Yarbrough, he bought Jonathan Green's do mine from the auction that was late last year and he filmed a little clip and we're going to see Jonathan's do mine that Bradley owns which is so sweet but I have two dolls that were Jonathan's one doll that was Jonathan's and then this one Jonathan would love but before we dig into the doll and, and chat a little bit about the doll let's learn a little bit about Katie Crusa. there is a lot of wonderful information about Katie Crusa online one of my favorite things is a podcast from the doll podcast that features Jonathan Green and Louisa Maxwell who are having a wonderful and beautiful conversation about the life of Katie Crusa. And it is wonderful to hear Jonathan's voice and hopefully we can do a collaboration with that vlog here, with that podcast here in the future. But if you want to listen to it, I have a link in this video so you can listen to it if you really want to dig into some information about the life of Katie Crusa. So let's chat about the incredible artistry that is KT Crusa dolls. When we hear the name KT Crusa, that name is immediately synonymous in our brains if you have felt or seen or have KT Crusa dolls with innovation, 
artistry, craftsmanship, quality, all the wonderful things that we would want in a beautiful doll and in an artist doll. But Katie Cruza is a person that I greatly admire as a doll maker because she was so innovative and so brave. And she was doing this back when it was much harder to do it than it is now. And even now, being in the doll industry, any anyone that I can meet that is making a living and actually thriving and, and doing in dolls, I find so fascinating makers and artists and people. It's just an amazing way to live and to create, but she did it. So let's look at some pictures of some KT Cruza dolls and just have just an, an elevator, an elevator talk of just a little peek into the life and history of KT Cruza. KT Cruza was not just a doll maker. She was a visionary who revolutionized the industry with her lifelike handcrafted creations. Born in 1883, Crusa began making dolls at the turn of the 20th century, driven by a desire to give her children dolls that had warmth, personality, and a comforting presence. Her dolls were a departure from the more rigid, less expensive toys of the era, capturing the hearts of not just her own children, but also of children and collectors around the world. What set Katie Crusa dolls apart was their unparalleled craftsmanship and the soulful expressions that seemed to bring each doll to life. Every doll was an expression of Crusa's belief that play is a fundamental aspect of childhood, deserving of objects made with love, care, and thoughtfulness. Among the treasures born from Katie Crusa's hands is the Dumine doll, introduced to the world in 1927 as Doll 7. This doll, which I have the privilege of discussing with you today, holds a special place in the lineage of Crusa creations. So the Doll 7, which is right here, is this was this doll was made to be a little bit smaller and to be a little bit more affordable, but they are just absolutely wonderful. So I'm gonna bring him in so you can see a little bit about him and see his little face. Sally, our wonderful Sally, sent me a couple notes and I'm just gonna read a couple of my notes. So Sally said, D despite its smaller size, it carried all the hallmarks of Cruz's attention to detail from the wide hips and separately sewn on thumbs to the expressive hand-painted cloth head. The Dumine doll came in two versions. One, a rare find, featured the Dumine cloth doll with painted hair, echoing the charm and detail of its predecessors. Production of this version was short-lived, ending in the early 1930s, making it a sought-after piece for collectors today. The other version, with its distinctive doll one painted cloth head, saw changes throughout the years, especially in the 1930s when its body was slimmed down and the hands were crafted in one piece. This version continued to delight collectors with its cloth head well into the 1950s. This one right here is the earlier version, and thank you, Sally, for your notes, just to clarify and make sure that I say the right thing, because I'm still learning a lot. Along, along with you, I'm still learning. I knew this was a do mine as soon as I saw it. A wonderful gentleman named Glenn had this doll that was his mother's. And this doll, which you might have seen earlier in a couple videos back from our international doll collection, came in this collection. So I was thrilled to have him and to have this doll that was original to his mother who bought it when she was in Germany. Like, how cool is that? So wonderful. But look at the, I'm going to bring it in here and show you the just extraordinary condition of the head and the painting. When we learn that this doll is from, the, it was made in a very short time frame, 1927 to 1930, that's coming up on a hundred years. Isn't that wild to think about that it is? But it is, and the painting, Paul is helping film right now and getting a really good focus so you can just see the wonderful painting and the beautiful lifelike expression on this doll. He is absolutely wonderful. And here we go, the separately sewn thumb that you can see right there, and a really, really cute costume. There are some that have wonderful costumes, much more elaborate than this one, but I just think he's absolutely adorable. The hat really makes it, but one of the best parts, now I am going to clean these socks. <laughs> these socks need a little, need a little cleaning, but they've never had anything like that in a hundred years. So he is just looking so great but I'm gonna pull off his 
feet. Oh, you can see how clean the socks are underneath his. Holland Diane comes home from school looking like this a lot where <laughs> the bottom of her shoes is clean, but the top part of the socks is not because she likes to play on the playground. That's what this guy liked to do is play on the playground. But we're going to pull off his socks because the signature on the bottom of the foot is very, very good. Oh, he just lost his hat. But he is just such a little treasure and going to live here at the doll shop in our Jonathan Green exhibit. Memorial tribute and it says 1148 Katie Crusa and then those must just be other factory markings I don't know what they are but I'm going to show them to you so look at that isn't that a great marking right there it's just very clear and vivid and you can really see it well really 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 nice and then look at the chubby toes you guys toes and a chubby toes on on any doll and especially on babies and like toddlers, they're, they're, little, they're little tiny toes. It's one of my favorite things on babies and on dolls, but I love that. They're beautifully made, real, real, real nice. The earliest dolls were stuffed with reindeer hair and I don't think, I don't think he is, but you can kind of, no, I don't think he is. I, I would think you can kind of tell by the crunch of the sound, but I don't know. I am definitely not a KT Cruza expert by any means. I can look at one and know if it's earlier or later and I can figure it out based on the body type and the size. That's the thing is like you can, if you have a book or even an older, an auction catalog, or if you look on the internet at old auction listings, you can figure out almost anything with just a little bit of research. People email me all the time and I'm always very kind about it, but I just want to tell them like, if you just, if you just Googled the name on the outside of that box, you'd have your answer much quicker than it took you to email me these photos. But Jonathan would appreciate that. He would appreciate that because man, I get inundated. I get like 50 emails a day. I'm not exaggerating either, but I do a lot of voice texting when I respond to the emails so they can go faster. But you know, sometimes we get a great email with, with somebody that wants to come in with this sweet little do mine. So he is just a little treasure and going to live here at our doll shop. And I'm going to clean the socks, like I said, but otherwise he is ready to go. So I would love to know if you have any Katie Cruises in your collection. Before we look at the last doll, which we've shown before that was from Jonathan's collection, we're going to just look at a very short clip that Bradley sent of his do mine that was in that, that belonged to Jonathan Green. He bought it from the Theriot's collection who sold Jonathan Green's, a lot of Jonathan Green's dolls. And I bought this one from that auction and so Bradley misses Jonathan very much. They were very good friends and it was hard for him to even send this clip because we are just still reeling and grieving and thinking about him all the time. I had a wonderful person on the internet that her name was Nancy and she sent me some pictures of Jonathan when he was really young like in his 20s and I'll share those pictures at the end of the video but let's take a sweet little look at Bradley's do mine that belonged to Jonathan Green. What a sweet little doll. And that was the one that really spoke to Bradley. So he went for it in the auction and I'm really glad that Bradley won it. So that is very sweet. Here's the one that I went for in the auction. I actually went for a lot of dolls in that auction. Not a lot. I did some emotional bidding. There was a pair of Georgines, huge, huge Georgines that Jonathan really loved. And he had done some videos with me where they were shown multiple times, but he was showing his childhood dolls and they were on each side of him. They were some of his favorites. And I think I bid, I don't know, I bid a lot, way more than they were worth, but I wanted them and I still was outbid. But I was really glad that the person that won them really really wanted them and nobody would bid that high unless they really wanted them to remember Jonathan. So I think that that's a beautiful thing. So whoever won them, I'm so glad that you won them. And 
you know, I gave it a good shot. But here is the one that is very, very sweet. This one's circa 1920, so she's about seven or eight years, maybe nine older than the Dumain. So it's it's a larger version and I love her little knitted costume. You can see once you get to learn dolls and you know what they look like and you're really learning what dolls look like, you can look at a doll and immediately know what it is. So KT Crusa, it, the company is actually still in operation. They are still making dolls. And I will show you, I'm just gonna grab it. This was the one that Jonathan was designing with the Katie Cruza doll factory for his event that was at UFDC over the summer in July that we gave a tribute to Jonathan Green and helped introduce this doll. So they are still made hand painted by artisans that are at the factory. There aren't very many artisans that are skilled enough to do this type of painting and this type of work, which is why the dolls take so long to make. Literally, they take so long. They take like at least a year, which I think is a really long time. When, you're, when you've got a factory and you're just busting them out and they're just like made from printers and stuff like that, it still takes a while, but nothing like a hand-painted doll. I know some doll artists that work on dolls, just like a painter or anybody else working on a really wonderful masterpiece for years, which, which is amazing. So when, you, when you're looking at a doll or even you're talking to a contemporary doll artist, you're paying not just for the beauty, you're paying for their contribution and their work and how much time and effort and energy that went into creating this beautiful piece of art. I love art, I love museums, I love so many different beautiful things in the world, but one of my my favorite way, not one of my favorite way to experience the world and to enjoy art is through the art of doll collecting and through dolls. And so to share this with the world and to think of and remember my very good friend, Jonathan, your very good friend, Jonathan, and me being here and talking about him is something I'm never going to quit doing. I will never forget him. And so it was really a, a treat to share this video with you today. And I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any Katie Crusa dolls or you know any wonderful fun facts or, or anything like that definitely leave them in the comments I always love to hear what you have to say and again if you want to hear Jonathan speaking about Katie Crusa click that podcast that is by the the doll podcast which is very very well done by Louisa Maxwell so thank you so much everybody we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you very soon bye